the hook we've got is an 8. I asked for a 10 because also uh, remember in winter uh, you're going to fish smaller in general. It's always going to be either like I either fish tiny or huge and in, in, in streamers. Sorry, it's going to cut this quickly. Um, so I think it's, it's always advisable to fish smaller patterns, especially in winter and on pressured water especially. I spent the last winter with, uh, 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 last winter, me and Dan, Daniel Factor fished the, the Camberg together. And um, I was always peering in his fly box because that kid can fish. And, uh, um, and the one thing he said to me is that he's, he's, he never fishes really above a size 10. He likes to fish like really small, smaller flies. And that doesn't mean just nymphs, he's talking about streamers. Like your standard woolly buggers, pancora buggers, the stuff that you would fish in winter. He just reduces the sizes. Because in general, fruit forms are smaller in, in, in winter. Okay, so unfortunately my eyes that I'm going to tie in this uh, plastic bead chain, I took a bit of the gold off. They, they, they're gold plated, so you guys can take it off if you don't want the gold. I'll just try to get them black. Um, but they're a little bit uh, too small for this hook now because we were, we were going to work with a size 10. <clears throat> but we'll just carry on as, with this is fine. So what I do is I tie in the, 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 uh, the bead chain is uh, um, attached with uh, thread between the two beads and I just wrap my thread around the eyes like you should see there just to make them stand proud. Um, so i just show you there. Just to make them stand proud. And then I go a few, a few wraps around the bottom just to make sure they, they uh, seat it. And then just to prevent them from... Uh, I'm twisting, I'm just going to put a little tiny drop of, there we go. If I cock up, I can blame it on the obies. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start with uh, the marabou tail. So, <clears throat> for, for my buggers and my... Uh, um, basically streamers that I tie with marabou, I like to use a generous amount of marabou. I always feel that uh, you, can, you can always thin out your marabou tail if you need to. You can't add to it. And, uh, you know, after a few fish and a little bit of this and a little bit of that, that tail gets thinned out by accident anyway. So, um, as you guys can see, what I've done there is, uh, I'll just put this clump over here. Um, when you when you uh, plucking your marabou from your feather, uh, I don't normally use the tip because the, the strands on the tip is very thin; they're not as fluffy. So what you, what you do is you grab it, you start at the top, and you just as you break them off, you roll them. You just keep rolling them onto each other like that. Roll it, then you roll it until you get to the bottom section or where you want to stop, and then you've got your um, your little bundle of marabou there then as everybody shows you you can uh, wet it makes handling much easier and then I cut off that um, a bit of the stem that's stuck to the bottom uh, to the top there same as what Marius basically showed you the other night so I'm just going to add a few more strands in so I feel want my tail slightly thicker this is an eight. Okay, so there's my, my bundle. Take this, the shorter fibers out. So I've only got the long ones. And then I'm going to just take my fingernails and you just pull the fluff off the stem of the marabou. Just to thin it out for the tying, tying in. I'm just going to lie it behind the head to a few loose wraps and then I'm going to start tying it in and pulling it maybe if I have to and just pull it a bit. And then I'm going to stop just above the where, the, where, you, would, where you normally would have a hook, uh, uh, a barb. 
I wonder how they're going to teach new uh, fly ties how where the barb would be because they're never going to grab with barb there. They're going to where should we put the stop the thread? So anyway, above the hook barb, <clears throat> that's where you stop the thread at the back. Now normally, uh, what what you saw the other guys do and what a lot of what a lot of you guys do for still waters is we put a little. Um, you know, Dean started with it. He said you, you tie a little bit of DA in as um, Andy Burke used to do. Or um, as uh, Morris showed you the other night, um, you put a little uh, mono loop there. That just prevents your, your tail from wrapping. Because if you're doing long cast, you're doing a long retrieve, you don't want your fly to have been fouled and you waste all your time. But there's another trick that you can do that also, <coughs> that's also very quick and easy to do. Instead of doing those other procedures, is in, instead of tying in things that prevents the tail from wrapping, all you, can, all you can do is you just take your thread and you wind it around the back of the tail. Almost like, uh, like posting a parachute. That saves a lot of time, right? Yeah. And you don't need a much. If, you, if you've got thicker thread, sometimes I tie my buggers with a little bit thicker thread than this. It's like two or three turns, and a thread, because it flattens a bit. And there you go. And normally, I'm, I'm not going to do the... We can do crystal flash, I suppose. I should have done the crystal flash before I did that, but... Um, in winter, I would, uh, uh, especially for subtle little patterns, I wouldn't go too much with a flash, but I think for tonight, we have to make this pattern a, a bit more technical. I can't just die too easy. Can't be that easy. Okay, so there's your flash. I'm just going to leave that for now. I'm going to turn my tail light on. All right, now I'm going to put in my. Um, I, I bring my thread forward again. Tie in my. Oh, this is um, what you guys should do with this wire. It's a little bit thick. Um, so if you want to thin your, if you've got a copper wire and you and it's slightly too thick for your fly, all you do is you just run it through your fingers. Copper, your copper wire. Even if you got like, if you stuck with thick, thick copper wire, you thin copper wire. You run through your fingers, and that actually thins the copper wire out a bit. So I got thinner copper wire. And then my hackle. Now, hackle for woolly buggers. Everybody's got their thing that they tie that they use for woolly buggers. I would advise my favorite hackle for woolly buggers really is is bad stuff, like really like hen 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 annex, because they really bad quality. <laughs> And that's kind of what you want for a bugger, because um, when you tie in the the, 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 the feather, you don't want this th uh, uh, hackle to stand so proud and be so strong, it looks like a dry fly. You want it to be subtle, so you're obviously always looking for, um, if you guys can see there where the darker part of the feather is, where that means the, the flu is softer there, and the stem is softer there. Hmm? Oh, down, yeah. There we go. So that, that darker part. Is a part that you really want in your fly because those, that section that is darker, is thicker and the and the and the, and the feather there, the, the the fiber is slightly more flexible, so it's uh, it's not so stiff. You'll see with dry fly hackles, you, that that little dark little thing will be very narrow. Um, you want obviously they want the stiff these very stiff uh, fibers on the end, and when, you, when you're dealing with the dry fly, but you don't want that for a woolly bugger. You want softer flats, uh, ackles. And obviously for big woolly buggers, guys using slapping, but slapping is slapping in general is too big a feather to put on a woolly bugger. So you don't want the thing to be so oversized. So what I normally do is I I will pull off a little bit of the front there just to know that where I'm going to be finish off. Give me an indication. I'm going to finish off about there, and then um, I'll take my feather. You can always do it while you're on the fly as well, and I'll just pull off a few fibers at the back there, but not all the way to the front. So my feather looks like that now, okay. Then I'm going to tie it in by the tip. I'm going to bring it back, just to the back there, okay. Now I'm going to do the dubbing. I haven't used this dubbing, so I hope it works nicely. We're going to use our first go. Okay, so for the pattern, oh, ooh, this stuff's lovely. So for this pattern, um, um, obviously you can you can want if you depending on what you want it to f look like, you can make it. A bit more buggier to look like a dragonfly 
or you can make it uh, a little more, more sparse and thinner to look like a damselfly. So what we're doing is we're just going to go sort of in the middle of the road. We're not, not going to make it too buggy and not going to make it too thin. So it could be either or, because that's what really what it is. This tan actually darkens in the water. Right? Yeah, so this, this tail actually actually got a, a, a tied a few nymphs with this, and I fished it the other day because I knew I was going to tie this, but now I wanted to try the tan. So the tan really does darken the water. And the first cast or so, you'll see it. It doesn't, it's not wet throughout, still light. Uh, and the fish kind of liked it because they came and looked at it because it's a lighter. But uh, then, it, then it darkens uh, in the water. So, so I think the reason why they, 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 they're more easier on, the, on, the, on a tan pattern is because um, the silhouette's not so pronounced. And, and especially in the winter, the water's super clear. So now you've got something that's quite subtle. It's either it's there or it's not there. You know, it's like it's not something like it's like not, not like a black bugger that's in your face. Yeah, like, yeah I can see the seam coming. So uh, I think that's why they're a little bit more susceptible to be duped by this pattern. Um, okay, so I'm just going to wind it now forward. And this is just basically a standard thickness. You can run a slight taper up to the head if you want to. And then really, if you, if you guys, kind of nice thing about this thing is, if you guys now want to tie a dragonfly, um, and you're in a pinch, and you, and, and you can use the same uh, uh, basic principle for a dragonfly, and then you, you're going to go for something more like an Andy Berg dragon bugger. So basically, if you can imagine it, you will tie your, your, your um, uh, marabou tail much, more, much fatter uh, in, the, in the back, because um, that's basically the abdomen of, of the of the of an Asian dragon. It's this uh, voluminous uh, um, abdomen, and then you, you you can tie this section almost a little bit shorter with bigger eyes, obviously, and then um, slightly bigger hackle if you wish, and then you just pull a shell back from from the back here over to the behind the head, and over the head you, pull, you can pull a shell back. Then you've got like a dragonfly. That's an Andy Burke uh, dragon bugger, which is a quite an effective pattern. And if you want this uh, um, a uh, a damsel. You, you just tie this sparser, the tail probably a little bit sparser, and, you, and the legs a lot sparser than what I'm going to do now here. And then you've got a damselfly. So it's a very versatile pattern. Okay, so now you see I've, I've ripped off some of the hackle at the back, and so what I do is I sort of follow so I've ripped it a little bit more off. Let's see how much I've got there. So I've ripped a little bit more off there, as you can see. So what I basically do is I'm following John Beam's advice. I try and go around the, 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 the pattern itself, not too much, like three times. And then I'm going to come to the front. Now in the front, you'll notice I've got, here's where I use, do my own little version. I've got all the fibers now in the front here. And then I make uh, the, tur the turns almost closer to each other. So because at the front is basically where the legs are, and I'm trying to just put a little bit more, more hackle into the, into the pattern. And I do that with my woolly buggers in general as well. So basically, if you guys can look from the top there, you'll see now what I see there. there there's less hackle over the back, and slowly it increases in its density as it moves towards the front. And then I, and this is what I do for woolly buggers as well. I tie woolly buggers exactly the same way. All right, and we're going to take our thread, run it in the opposite direction. And yeah, I'm, I'm normally not too worried about, I, I do move my thread around a bit, obviously trying not to uh, lay the fibers, catch the fibers and lay them flat on the fly, but it's not too critical. There we go. So I've done my thread. I think I'll bring it forward a bit. This helicopter off. And we'll do the head. If you guys got orange thread, you can use uh, orange thread. It gives a little extra winter trigger there. Just something to pull them in.
two weeks ago I didn't have, I, I, I had this, uh, I've got the same little patterns, but I tied them smaller um, in about, they're almost this size, obviously like I said in the tin, and uh, um, it was before Jerry asked me to tie tonight, and uh, um, I thought just for the hell of it, um, I'll throw this at a, at, at a bunch of uh, schooling spawners, and um, the, 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 the fish ate first cast. I don't know if it came because of the plot, but it just came to waddled over. And there wasn't a tan one, because then I, I, there was, this was an olive one that I threw at them. Oops, I've missed a spot. And um, <clears throat> this one I tied now with plastic beaches, so they sink quite slowly. But you guys can obviously also uh, tie it with uh, the, the, the weight at the metal bead chain. Then you've got a, 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 um, a bit more of a fly with a, with a slightly better jigging action. I'm going to take Stinner's head out of it, making a ball up here. Say again? Did you ever put lead in? No, never. I think uh, uh, um, if uh, if I want to weight it, then I'll, I'll use the metallic bead chain. Hey, thank you. All right, guys. Knock yourselves out. Uh -huh.